Hello and welcome back. Radio waves can propagate from a transmitter to a receiver in four different ways. Through ground waves, sky waves, free space waves, and open field waves. Propagation with respect to radio waves simply refers to how they travel and how far. Knowing how radio waves propagate and how they behave in certain weather events can not only help you pass this exam, but it can also help you communicate successfully when life and property are at risk. Are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. This video is Lesson 3, Part 1 of my Amateur Radio Technician Class License course covering the 2022 to 2026 question pool. I am your instructor, Gary Stevens, and my call sign is Kilo Echo 2 Gulf Sierra. I have been an amateur operator since 2001, an amateur extra since 2014, and teaching amateur radio for over 15 years now. The T3 section covers radio wave propagation. On your exam, three questions are selected at random from this sub-element. There are three groups with a total of 34 questions. This video covers the first group. T3A, radio wave characteristics. It covers how a radio signal travels, fading, multipath, polarization, wavelength versus absorption, and antenna orientation. You should know that multipath propagation cancels or reinforces signals. This is why VHF signal strengths sometimes vary greatly when the antenna is moved only a few feet. After a radio wave leaves the antenna, it travels in a straight line just like light does. As a result, it can be reflected off of some objects and absorbed by others. A problem arises when the same signal is received from multiple paths. Some signals take slightly longer to arrive at the receiving antenna. As a result, they either cancel out the other signals or they reinforce or strengthen them. The question is, why do VHF signal strengths sometimes vary greatly when the antenna is moved only a few feet? A, the signal path encounters different concentrations of water vapor. B, VHF ionospheric propagation is very sensitive to path lengths. C, multipath propagation cancels or reinforces signals. Or D, all these are correct. If you answered C, multipath propagation cancels or reinforces signals, then you are correct. We should know that the effect of vegetation on UHF and microwave signals is absorption. Vegetation has leaves filled with chlorophyll. Chlorophylls absorb light more strongly in the blue portion of the magnetic uh, spectrum and the red portion, especially down in the infrared. But it also absorbs UHF waves or higher. The effect of the absorption on radio waves is called attenuation. That means a reduction of energy or force. Notice in this diagram that the signal is stronger through the tree in the winter than it is in the summer with its full vegetation. Notice also that the signal is attenuated or reduced by the vegetation. However, it will often be completely absorbed or blocked so that the signal at higher frequencies doesn't even get through. Our exam question is, what is the effect of vegetation on UHF and microwave signals? A, knife edge diffraction, B, absorption, C, amplification, D, polarization or uh, rotation. We know that the answer is B, absorption. We should learn that horizontal polarization is normally used for long distance CW or Morse code and single sideband contacts on the VHF and UHF bands. This photo shows a horizontally polarized uh, dual band 2 meter and 70 centimeter Yagi antenna. The shorter elements are 70 centimeter and the longer ones are 2 meter. 
When talking uh, with a repeater, vertical polarization works better because that's typically the orientation that the uh, repeater antenna is in. However, horizontal works better for long distances because it works better with weaker signals. Our exam question looks like this. What antenna polarization is normally used for long distance CW and single side band contacts on the VHF and UHF bands? A, right hand circular, B, left hand circular, C, horizontal, D, vertical. The correct answer is C, horizontal. We should realize that the received signal strength is reduced when antennas at opposite ends of the VHF or UHF line of sight radio link are not using the same polarization. This slide illustrates how radio waves with vertical polarizations are perpendicular to those with horizontal polarization. Furthermore, you can see where the two intersect is the reception area that the two have in common. You can also see how small that area is compared to the entire wavelength. On the exam, you might see this question. What happens when the antenna at opposite ends of the VHF or UHF line of sight radio link are not used in the same polarization? A, the modulation sidebands might become inverted. B, received signal strength is reduced. C, signals have an echo effect, or D, nothing significant will happen. If you were paying attention, you know that the answer is B, received signal strength is reduced. We should know that when using a directional antenna, you might be able to access a distant repeater when buildings or obstructions are blocking the direct line of sight path if you try to find a path that reflects the signal to the repeater. This slide shows that uh, our QTH, or home location, has a building blocking our radio waves from the repeater tower located in the distance. However, we can access the repeater by bouncing our signal off of the building surface. The exam question is, when using a directional antenna, how might your station be able to communicate with a distant repeater if buildings or obstructions are blocking the direct line of sight path? A, change from vertical to horizontal polarization. B, try to find a path that reflects signals to the repeater. C, try the long path. D, increase the antenna SWR. The correct answer is B, try to find a path that reflects signals to the repeater. The term picket fencing means rapid flutter on mobile signals due to multipath propagation. Listen to this example of picket fences. Could you hear the rapid flutter? The exam question is, what is the meaning of the term picket fencing? A, alternating transmissions during a net operation. B, rapid flutter on a mobile signal due to multipath propagation. C, type of ground systems used with vertical antennas. D, local versus long distance communications. I hope you got the answer. It's B, rapid flutter on the mobile signals due to multipath propagation. You should know that precipitation is a weather condition that will decrease rain of microwave frequencies. Precipitation comes in many flavors, snow, rain, sleet, mist, hail, even fog. Water absorbs microwave radiation. The exam question is this. <clears throat> What weather condition might decrease range at microwave frequencies? A, high winds. B, low barometric pressure. C, precipitation. Or D, colder temperatures. The correct answer is C, precipitation. We need to know that a random combination of signals arriving via different paths is likely to cause irregular fading of signals received by, on by ionospheric reflection. This slide illustrates how signals could arrive 
at a distant station via different paths. As we discussed earlier, multipath propagation can cancel or reinforce the signal. Our test question is, what is a likely cause of irregular fading of signal propagated by the ionosphere? A, frequency shift due to Faraday rotation. B, interference from thunderstorms. C, intermodulation distortion. Or D, random combination of signals arriving via different paths. The answer you should have gotten is D, random combining of signals arriving via different paths. You should know that either vertically or horizontally polarized antennas may be used for transmission or reception because signals propagated by the ionosphere are elliptically polarized. If you recall from your math or geometry class in school, an ellipse is an oval shape. Radio waves bouncing off the ionosphere are not only elliptical, but they're also spiraled in a helix. This slide shows two dual band, two meter and 70 centimeter antennas. One is vertically polarized and the other is horizontally polarized. The exam question is as follows. Which of the following results from the fact that signals propagated by the ionosphere are elliptically polarized? A, digital modes are unusual. B, either vertically or horizontally polarized antennas may be used for transmission or reception. C, FM voice is unusable. Or D, both the transmitting and receiving antennas must be of the same polarization. The correct answer is B, either vertically or horizontally polarized antennas may be used for transmission or reception. We should know that the effect that multipath propagation has on data transmission is that the error rates are likely to increase. Well, the error correction algorithms are pretty awesome about digging out uh, signals from the noise. Multipath propagation can increase error rates considerably. On the exam, you might see this. What effects do multipath propagation have on data transmissions? A, transmission rates must be increased by a factor equal to the number of separate paths observed. B, transmission rates must be decreased by a factor equal to the number of separate paths observed. C, no significant changes will occur if the signals are transmitted using FM. Or D, error rates are likely to increase. The correct answer is, of course, D, error rates are likely to increase. For the exam, it is good for you to know the ionosphere is a region of the atmosphere that can refract or bend HF or VHF radio waves. The ionosphere is an area that's between 30 and 260 miles above. The area is filled with ions, thus its name. HF and VHF waves bounce off the ions and allow for long distance communications. You could get this question. Which region of the atmosphere can refract or bend HF or VHF radio waves? A, the stratosphere. B, the troposphere. C, the ionosphere. D, the mesosphere. The correct answer is C, the ionosphere. We need to know that there is little effect on the 10 meters or six meter bands during periods of fog or rain. Fog and rain primarily have adverse effects in the microwave bands. Chances are you've listened to FM radio in your car during rain or fog conditions and did so without any issues. On the exam, you might see this question. What is the effect of fog and rain on signals in the 10 meter and six meter bands? A, absorption. B, there's little effect. C, deflection. Or D, range increase. The correct answer is B, there is little effect. This is the end of part three, lesson one. Can you believe that we've already covered almost 30% of all the questions in the pool? I hope you're feeling confident and know that uh, you're more than capable of passing the FCC exam. Thomas Edison once said, if we all did the things we are capable of doing, we would literally astound ourselves. Until next time, my friends.
never stop learning. <laughs>